What's up, everybody? Big Herc 916. You're tuning in to another edition of Fresh Out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that share. I told you guys we're turning it up and we got some interesting guests on our show. I got with me here Gerald Lacey, retired naval aviator. For those who don't know, this gentleman was a fighter pilot in the Navy, man. He's a G, a real G. You know, you've seen a lot of these movies out here, Top Gun, Maverick, you know, a bunch of these other movies. Um, this man actually lived that life. And I wanted to get some people on here who could share a different aspect of things you haven't been exposed to. Um, Gerard, could you tell the people, you know, how, how was it going through uh, flight training and how would you compare it, your experience to what people saw in the movie Top Gun and Maverick? Okay. Um, hmm. Flight training was interesting. Um, one, you got to be a college graduate just to even be selected into a flight program and, uh, or going through college. And I found out too when I took the, uh, there's a different test that we take. It's a flight exam other than the ASVAB test. And you're competing with the same seats with everybody across the nation. The guys, mm. at, guys and girls at the Naval Academy, all the way to different ROTCs, OCS, you're competing for the same seat to go to Pensacola, Florida. If you're blessed and your grades are good, you're in, the, you're in there. But the, the Navy has what they call needs in the Navy, meaning you go to flight school, that doesn't mean you're gonna fly fighters. Um, the needs in the Navy could be, like my class, they want helicopter pilots. Well, okay, it is what it is. Well, unfortunately, they come back weeks later. We got two slots open for jets. Dang. Okay. Well, only the top two people are going to get the slots. So everybody looking around like, who's the top two? Well, you know who they are. The guy before me, he wanted to stay in the helo program. I was the number two guy. So I got bumped up to one. Wow. The guy next to me got bumped up to number two. So we ended up going through the uh, jet syllabus. Um, then uh, flew T-34 Mentors, which is a turboprop plane um, out of Whitingfield, Florida at Pensacola. And then um, ended up going to Meridian, Mississippi, hellhole, um, to fly T-45 Ghost Hawks. In fact, my class was the first class to break in the T-45s oh, wow. when she arrived on decks, on the decks of the uh, air station. I got my wings a uh, year and a half later, and um, I had a choice to go to East Coast or West Coast to fly, to learn how to fly F-18s, and um, I decided to go West Coast. So they stationed me at a VFA 125, uh, the Raiders out of uh, Lemoore, California. Lemoore is a little air station, middle of the desert, middle of nowhere. By Fresno, right? Yeah, by yeah, Fresno, yeah, by exactly, Fresno. exactly. And now also, before I got into the F-18s, you had to land on a carrier by yourself. That was an experience for itself. Now, it's, let's back up a minute. Now, the, the physical aspect, because I mean, when you see the movies, you see them in the G-Force uh -huh. things, and you see them like in the tanks, and you got to be in, in shape. I mean, what is the physical condition for that? Because the mental's got to be, it's on another level. I already know, but the right. physical, like, how is that? Well, you got to meet the requirements at the physical for the Navy. Like uh, for the officers, they want us to run at least a mile and a half to between a mile and a half to three miles of running. Um, you're hitting the weight slot because the G forces, your body is taking on. I mean, your head can go from 10 ounces to 700 pounds, you know, within a snap. Yeah. Because you're pulling a hard G. Um, man, the, the, you know, just stay in shape. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of running, a lot of cardio, uh, not much weight lift. You want to lift weights, but cardio is the main thing because you got to learn how to use your muscles to flex your uh, leg and stomach muscles to flex for the G forces. Even though you got in the G suit, you still got to learn how to breathe within pulling, let's say, five G's, six G's, seven and eight. When you go on vertical, you got to yeah. be able to. Yeah, that's crazy, man, because I used to watch the. Uh, as a kid, watch the Blue Angels, and I've seen the carriers at Fleet Week, and, and you see them pull, you know, go by, and you mm -hmm. see the planes on there. I mean, dude, how, f 
It's, I know, how fast are you coming in? I mean, it's like, and you got to land, and then they have the, you know, I've seen in the movie, they have the the, 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 the thing that catches a plane, and then... The plane. wire, right. I mean, what is that, man? What is that Well, catch? there's a certain levels that we have to get, you know, achieve before you hit the deck. Um, when we go up at, like, let's say, 4,000 feet, we start making our calls. So we do a pass, right, pass a carrier, we call it carrier break. So once we, if this is the carrier, we'll go like this, and then we'll do a kiss off, break, and we break 40, like 45 to 90 degrees parallel to the boat. Wow. And then another hard turn, and then we slow it down. Now, when you slow it down, you're checking, everything is all your instruments, believe your instruments. That's what they told us. Don't believe what you feel, read your instruments. Your instrument's gonna tell you exactly where you are, where to carry, and your speed. Yeah. So, um, with all that, you got to think about crosswind. You got to think about the deck of the, of the boat. The boat still, is still moving. And the deck, sometimes heavy weather, will be like a Dutch roll. Oh, so the back wow. end is doing this. Now, mind you, we have a window within two feet to land. Coming in at about 150 knots. If not, between 100, 130, 150 knots. Yeah. So when, when, when you see a scene from like, Top Gun or Maverick, I mean, is that pretty much how it is? Is that similar? Mm, is it more Hollywood? Yeah, it's Hollywood, but <laughs> um, somewhat, but it's mostly Hollywood because number one, pilot, you know, aviators, we don't wear our name across our helmet like that. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your name's on the back okay. of your helmet. Yeah. In, you know, your, and it's your call sign is in the back. Okay. And, um, you're wearing a uh, dark visor instead of clear, but this is Hollywood, so. Gotta see the face. Right, but in actual combat, or just flying period, daytime you're wearing a dark visor with the, with the night vision receptacles on, on top during certain maneuvers. Uh, and day and nighttime you may wear a clear, but once again, once you got night vision units on it, you're, you know, you're doing something else. <laughs> So um, another movie that comes to mind when I think about fighter pilots is um, Behind Enemy Lines. I don't know if you ever seen that. Yeah, with uh, Gene Hackman. Gene, you, Gene Hackman, remember? And, and, and he, he, his plane got shot down. And I think um, the actor... Uh, Owen Wilson. Yeah, he had to try to get... But he, was, he got shot down. They weren't supposed to be over there. Right. And he had to make it out of... Uh, right. I want to say... I don't, I don't know if... That I was, was, that was doing Yugoslavia. Was, Yugoslavia, yeah. yeah. That was my first taste of battle. Oh shit, you were there? I was there in 19, um, oh man. What, late 90s, yeah. Dang, cause that movie, I've watched it like four or five times. I was with, uh, VFA, what was it, 90, I was with either 94 The Strikes or The Warhawks, one of the, one of the two squadrons I was with. But we did, um, on the, I was on the Lincoln, no, the Washington. Damn, so what was that like over there, man? Was it really like, I mean. You I know, mean, the, that, you, that little skirt, the, that little skirmish, it was, number one, we took our orders from the NATO Supreme Commanders. Oh, wow. So we really didn't have any say. It was just like, your orders, you're gonna get it from the Supreme Commander of NATO forces. So it was a NATO action, and we, we just got caught up in it because we're part of NATO. We're part of NATO. Mm. So um, there was some real crazy shit they did over there too, because some parts of that movie is kind of exaggerated, but it's true. They were burying dead folks and, and um, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, because I do a lot of reading and stuff, and then, you know, a lot of people don't really understand, like, a lot of these uh, conflicts, they involve, whenever NATO's involved, it's a whole nother agenda. It's a whole different agenda. A whole yeah. different agenda has, you know, like you said, they'll have... French, Canadian, American over there yeah. doing stuff and it ain't got nothing to do with what you think and whatever uh, government's in the right then, it's, it's a lot of other yeah, stuff going on. Yeah, your battle group, like for us, our battle group commander wasn't a uh, two or three star admiral. We were getting from another admiral, like from the Canadians or the British. So it was a, it was a little diff, you know, different. Now, the war that I really, it still kind of bothers me a little bit is the uh, shock and awe. Oper in Operation Enduring Freedom, OIF. And um, yeah, I saw some real battles, of, you know, doing close cover for some Marines like out of Fallujah and Nazaria. Oh, wow. And yeah, that's. Ha 
Now, in a situation like that, were you guys, did you, did you, uh, you know, come under heavy fire or were you? When we got low, yeah, because that's what we were doing, um, troop support, you know, personnel support. Wow. You know, the Marines on the deck and, you know, they get pinned down, they'll call us, if, especially if the helos aren't there to, you know, to help them out. We come in and lay Ordy and, uh, yeah. Fallujah Nazaria, I, I've, if I met a Marine on the street and they were the OIF and, I'll, you know, they need a campaign, Fallujah Nazaria, we kind of like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I've seen, um, I, I forgot the name of the other movie, man, and it was pretty, it was crazy, man. The guy, um, remember the, <clears throat> the guy was trapped in Afghanistan and he was trying to get out. Yeah. I forgot the name of the movie, but I mean, dude, he was, the, the locals took him in, the tribe took him in. Yeah. But literally he was just like they were they couldn't eat and there was nobody and he couldn't get support mm -hmm. to come in there to cover to pull them out because don't they come call what they, they call them with the gunships the helicopters yeah, come in gun, and, yeah. and then sometimes and then, then like you said you guys have come in you know if necessary if if they can't actually get in because right. of heavy fire it's it's a lot of coordination because sometimes um you're doing high altitude we call um high altitude cover high altitude cover um cap and um We'll sit there and be up there for like hours on end without seeing a fight. Damn. Just hours on end. Just waiting. Way up order. there? In this yeah. We're just waiting on our orders, you know, because they eat uh, an AWAC or some other surveillance aircraft would give us orders. Okay. Go over there and suppress that, you know, give it yeah. to them. But nine times out of ten, like some of the battles that we've been in, I've seen nine times out of ten, you're up in the air. Just protecting the carrier, high altitude. Maybe you get a call to roll in on some marine to help out some marines or a special forces unit in on, in of, uh, Afghanistan. So, wow, man! But we up there circling and take on fuel, the in-flight refueling. Just sit there, okay? Two hours, okay? Time to get back on deck. Wow! So literally just. Um you know, it, it, it waiting for something to kick off. So, what about like you know? Because I know if you get like other aircraft that had come too close to the, to the, you guys ever had a situation like that where you're out of sea where uh, they violated airspace? Um, we've had some um, issues where uh, you see a unmanned vehicle from one of the other guys, oh, bad wow. guys coming in. And usually the, the surveillance planes would know what it is and he'd say either get, is it, is it a threat or whatever? We find out whether it's a threat or not. Okay. So just from certain um, linkage we have through this aircraft, data link it, whatever, and we'll find out if there's a, if that's a threat or not. Man, I can only imagine how, how intense that is because, you know, I've watched just a lot of military stuff, Ben. And the, just in essence, whatever you see in the movies about fighter pilots, it's not true. It's not true. Because we go through some real shit, and it's sometimes boring. The movie, I could tell, I, I kind of tell people day on a boat. The movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, when he wakes up doing the same thing, same time, that's life on a carrier. Wow. You wake up at six o'clock, you brush your teeth, you get dressed, you go eat grub, you go to work. And you do this for months on end. And how many people on a carrier? God, roughly 5,000. Everybody working different shifts, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. And there's days where I don't fly. I didn't fly. I was just like, get up, you know, clean, brush up, you know, shower, whatever, brush up to go to the wardrobe, have breakfast, then go in the ready room and just sit there in the ready room doing my reports or whatever. And how, how, many, how many aircraft were on an uh, actual aircraft? Uh, usually you get between 80 to, between 80 to 100. Yeah. 80 to 100. So how... How big is the aircraft? I mean, I've seen them, but I, I, you know, it's hard as a kid to tell. I would say they always compared to like taking three football state, major football things like a Rose Bowl, put them all, stack them up. That's how big they are. Wow, man, that's incredible, man. That's an incredible thing. I can just, that's like a floating city. It is a floating city. Wow, just the different levels. Could you have people who are engineers and dealing with the mechanics of the ship who? Yeah aren't even involved, in the, they're just maintaining the ship. Yeah, you have, if it's a nuclear carrier, which I've been on, um, 
you have the guys in the nuclear department doing all and that's nobody goes in that area that's off limits yeah. unless you're trained um but just the the basic engineers they they're busting their asses um you got people doing all kind of jobs like make sure fresh water is going um hot water sometimes because sometimes they'll shut down the hot water because they're doing a test on the re one of the reactors okay no hot water for a couple hours wow. um my right before i retired out the internet was starting to kick in really high okay and they would have the um they call the internet protocol officer and he would he or she would be the one to make sure either the internet was off or on so there'd be days uh where you had no internet and the new kids, it's funny to see the generation gap. The kids are freaking, oh my God, there's no internet. What do I do? Oh my God. <laughs> and I used to laugh oh, at that. I was just like, uh, it's called a pen and a paper. Many sailors for the last 246 years have been doing it. Writing a letter home. Yeah. Dear mama, <laughs> dear baby. <laughs> wow. So you've seen just the whole transition. I saw the whole transition. I joined the Navy in 1986. I retired in 2007. Wow, yeah, yeah, so you're right I saw a whole transitioning. I saw the Navy go from a bunch of hard dick dudes to women on board now, where now you had to conduct yourself in a, in a manner because now you were dealing with women. Wow. Man, some crazy stuff, man. Hey, you guys, I told you, we're bringing fire over here representing the military shout out to everybody who served our country you guys have done you guys are uh, uh, just you guys are true heroes man gerald lacy big hurt 916 fresh out stop walking around with a crusty butt smelly ball sack and a funky hoo-ha big hurt said wash that ass pick you up a t-shirt at freshoutseries.com <laughs>